Hello, today we're looking at Psalm 8. It's the Psalm of David. It's a, it's a real great psalm. It's not that long, but it packs a punch in the middle of it. But to start at the beginning, uh, David recognises God's majesty. He is saying to God, look God, I know you're a majestic God. I love you for it. You rule heaven and earth. You know, you're known throughout the earth. And at the end of the psalm, the last phrase of it, again, he uses the same way of saying, God, you are a majestic God. But in that God, you seem to use children or the weak to be able to flout the um, designs of the enemy. And I think he would probably say perhaps today that, God, there are great people of great intellect who argue against you. But sometimes I think the most successful way you have of defeating that argument is to use the words of children and the words of babies. And perhaps in that way he's saying you use the weak just to speak your word and speak what your uh, a testimony of you. And that's the best way you seem to um, defeat anything that comes against you. But he also goes on in the, in the chapter to talk about the fact that we as mankind have be given um, the job of managing creation, looking after this earth. And he talks about the stars, the fact that God has knitted the stars and the, the, the majesty of, of the heavens in that way of the sky. And also that we, look, you know, we are here to look after the, 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 the seas and the land. And I think if, if David was here nowadays, he would be thinking, and perhaps this is the way he is thinking, that you know, we're not doing a very good job of it, though. Um, and today we would say we are an um, environmental disaster. And so David is saying, look, I got some question. This is the question right at the middle of this psalm. I've got a question to ask. And it's a respectful one, God, because at the beginning and the end, I am praising you. and I'm recognizing your majesty. But the one question I must ask you in this is, why the heck do you bother with us? Why would you, in all your majesty bother with us I suppose in some ways you know we are just a created being why would you bother with us what is something about us that you that you find is of value to you because David's probably responded in his mind I'm not sure what you do and in this psalm he doesn't answer that question he leaves it open which begs the question of me when I'm reading it and perhaps of you when you read it, is to, so why do you bother with us, God? As I reflected on this, I've gone back to the beginning of the Bible, to Genesis, where it tells us that God made us in his image. And so God has given us all the tools we need, all the intellect, the capacity to be able to manage his creation, to the best of our ability and we will be able to achieve it but we don't do that and perhaps that's what his question is so why do you bother with us then God if we're not doing it correctly but I think it was Paul who recognized in his great love chapter in Corinthians 1 chapter 13 where Paul recognizes that God can't give up on us because he is love and love never fails love never gives up so the question is, why do you bother us is, God can't do anything else other than that. He loves us with a passion. So look through this psalm and, uh, and then discover for yourself as to the answer to the big question that David is asking. Why do you bother with us? Go through and look for yourselves. It's a, it's a great way of discovering how much God loves us. Have a great day.